down to um, the uh, Brecon, uh, Mackie Motors in Brecon. I was, uh, I'd had a call a while ago uh, just to say, uh, come in and see what the kind of latest deals are. And there are some pretty spectacular deals, it has to be said, on uh, doing the kind of PCP thing uh, for uh, reduction. So anyway, while I'm down, I thought uh, uh, get a wee spin in the new uh, ZE40 uh, version which um, I have uh, I've not actually uh, driven yet one of these um, and uh, take it for a wee spin so I just uh, when I got in I've reset the the trip meter and just to see so that was really nice seeing the mileage uh, so I've driven a couple of miles now and uh, 186 miles estimated on the range not bad. Uh, that is pretty good. In fact, it's, it's going up and up as I'm, I'm cruising down 187. Uh, I'm, I'm up to here. Um, the average on the consumption had not been very high, so I'm figuring it must have had quite a lot of uh, uh, blattering up and down the, the dual carriageway here. It was only three and a half miles per kilowatt hour, and I jumped in. So uh, I suspect this will this will continue creeping up if I uh, cruise a little bit down the country roads. Uh, what is really noticeable about it is it feels tighter and I think I've, I've seen a couple of other people mention this uh, now of course my car is three and a half heading towards four years old now um, so uh, it just feels a little bit more um, well it feels better screwed together um, that may be because I have a feeling I've got something under the front of mine a bush that is uh, wearing out because there's a when I'm going over some of the cobbled streets in in Aberdeen of which there are quite a few um, there's just a bit of a kind of shimmy rumble from uh, something at the front which no doubt is a rubber bush uh, wearing out and so needing a bit of uh, a bit of help um, so uh, yes, yeah, so I'm kind of down just to see what's uh, what's happening and to have a have a look at the car um, and think about kind of what I'm planning to do over the uh, the next wee while. Um, I've got a new battery lease on my my car um, and uh, it's it's fine. I mean, the battery is still okay in the summer, no problems at all. In the winter. I'm just getting to that one of the kind of long journeys I tend to do um, it gets a little bit tight sometimes um, to, to get where I want to go uh, when it used to be fine um, if it's a you know zero degrees kind of thing so I'm just starting to feel a little bit of that nip or and now it's, it's never let me down or anything I've always made it uh, but just uh, not as much of a comfort as they as they used to be um, which just makes you think, oh, maybe, hmm. Um, and the other thing is just uh, thinking about the battery change, which uh, I don't think they, I'm not sure in the UK that's happening just yet. Uh, I did ask the question. Um, but I do, I'm li I like the interior. I mean, of course, it's exactly the same in many ways. Uh, not exactly the same, it's very similar in many ways. But there's a few little uh, additions which are quite nice. I like on the door handles now that you've got uh, a bit of um, kind of cushioning uh, there rather than the, just the plastic that you've got on, on mine. And uh, otherwise, steering wheel and all that feels. In fact, I think the leather on the steering wheel just feels a little bit softer um, than it was on mine when I first got it. Maybe not. Maybe that's just uh, years of, of gripping it. It started to go, but it feels a bit of that kind of softer leather. Um, if yeah, some of you know from uh, other cars, our uh, the Citroen that we have is very nice, kind of very soft feel. Um, steering wheel which feels very similar to uh, when I last jumped into a Tesla had that similar kind of uh, texture or feel to it uh, which is good I am doing at the moment seven miles per kilowatt hour that is not bad on my average here uh, I'd be hard-pressed to see that on my car so I'm assuming this is the R90 version it's the uh, not the quick charge one um, I'd have to open the bonnet to, to double check that, see what motor's under there. 
Um, I would easily get 200 miles out of something with the uh, the bigger battery, usually, you know, um, which would be great for going down to Edinburgh and Glasgow and all that. What is missing on this one? It doesn't have the armrest. I miss that. I love my arm. <laughs> I love my armrest. And that was the best option to get, I'm sure, uh, of all of them. Right, what am I doing here? I have done uh, four miles uh, so far and I am at 189 miles, it says on the, the range gauge uh, at the moment. Not bad. Yeah, that's the R90 version, so it's a lot more compact in here uh, than my one, um, but it doesn't do the quick charging. It does 22 kilowatt uh, charging, uh, so yeah, fine for most uses, but if you're on long motorway runs or something like that, it would be a bit of a pain, because uh, that would be a couple of hours to charge up the battery on this one. I really like this new color, this new blue uh, color. Looks really smart. And the new wheels, actually. Those new wheels look better in person than I think they do in pictures. In pictures they look a little bit cheesy. Um, I think I probably prefer, I prefer the 17 inch tech run ones. They, they I still think they look really good. Uh, or just the kind of um, turbine type ones that are on. Uh, my car but actually these look okay in in person now do you know what that is closing with a little bit more of a thunk uh, than my car uh, my car does uh, so other we noticeable trip this is all different this nice little pattern on here uh, which looks kind of smart uh, this is no longer blue uh, and in fact this bit is not blue on, on my car either but uh, these bits are uh, over here and here and they're just silver uh, so all of the kind of trimmy bits are just silver now uh, which I guess I can understand that uh, and uh, yeah well, this is kind of same but you see over here this is now material and uh, there's not an awful lot of give in it but oh that's quite nice um, yeah feels better on your feels better on your arm to, to rest on that and it has um, mirrors that uh, clothes for parking which is quite handy I don't know if they do it automatically or not though when you lock uh, I had to undo them when I got in the car so I have a feeling that maybe they don't do it automatically um, not sure about that there's probably a command somewhere uh, on the uh, R link which looks exactly the same I haven't actually had a look in here just to, to see what's going on we'll turn that down um, yeah, it all looks exactly the same here. Uh, electric vehicle. All right. Yes, this looks all exactly the same uh, here. I'm just having a look through status. Not much rain again on there. We'll shut that off again. Um, yeah. Uh, little things that they've changed. I have noticed this before. There's a, now a little guard on the SD card. Do you see that? To stop it popping out. So that was one of the criticisms that early folks had. I have never had an issue with this. Um, apart from sometimes when my better half is in the car and shoves her coffee down here and then somehow uh, does it. It's never happened with me, but uh, uh, there we go. Uh, otherwise... Everything else looks kind of similar. I don't see any big changes anywhere else. Um, but it is noticeable. And it may just be just a bit of age there. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely less of a clatter than there is when uh, when you close uh, uh, the door on, on my car. 
uh, but all, all the rest of this is is all these controls are all just the same uh, and uh, all this so this is the um, uh, this will be the is it dynamic nav or something like that they call the kind of mid-range one uh, which in this case are oh, it does have the optional camera because uh, I don't think it comes with the camera as standard. It comes with the sensors, but not the camera. Uh, but this one has got it in, and absolutely for the, I think it's a couple hundred quid or something like that. You'd want to add it in once you, especially once you get used to having the camera there. Uh, you wouldn't want one without. Uh, so you see, I've just been sitting here. The engine's been running. Uh, the engine. What am I saying? It's been turned on, so the the air conditioning's on because it's actually quite quite a nice day today. Um, it's creeping up. 192 miles. Uh, pretty good. Oh, just as I say that. I'm back in my car. Uh, so, of course, it's all light trim because it used to be light trim up here. So that's the other thing. The other one is all kind of dark trim inside. But... Yeah, it's definitely a little bit different because the back, I should have checked the back doors really. So the back doors are the ones that are uh, um, really a bit uh, a bit tinny when you when you uh, get in. Uh, but uh, anyway, nice cars charged up, uh, 99%. <laughs> are you waiting? No, 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 I'll tell you, I'm looking for a better way. Going in the morning? I have no idea. No, no hey, idea. The oh, I know. It's a, it's a bad, a bad sign. No, I think <laughs> used to watch. Oh, okay. I've never slept on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know. It is. So I just jumped in. Uh, I've just I've driven a mile or so. So it was it wasn't at 100 the battery. It was 99. Uh, so it was doing the whole uh, conditioning thing. But look at that, 76 miles. Oh, that's not so good, is it? Uh, let me uh, let me uh, go in and reset this and see what it comes up with uh, instead. 404 miles. So not not super great, is it? Uh, and yeah, it's gone down a bit. <laughs> 74 miles so I'm definitely getting to that point of the uh, the battery now I think this is related to the battery uh, management there's been quite a chat a lot of chatter uh, amongst Zoe owners about an upgrade for the battery management system so I was in because I had the all the charging uh, equipment replaced uh, fairly recently, I kind of thought they might may, may have updated the software uh, as all a part of that. But now, when was that? That was the begin. Well, the end. Yeah, beginning of this year, uh, kind of December, January time. Um, however, I don't think it was. Uh, so I am starting to suffer some of the same issues that other people have had with it taking an inordinate amount of time at ninety nine percent. So sometimes I think I mean I don't I'm, I'm not really monitoring because uh, monitoring it, uh, but I it looks to me like on a few occasions and I've kind of happened to have noticed it, which is usually if I've uh, taken the dog for a walk, and then I happen to notice the car is sitting at uh, ninety nine percent, uh, getting charged, and then I don't get the message through to say it's fully charged for like another hour and a half or two hours or whatever. Uh, the whole time sort of doing trickling away so uh, yeah there's something definitely not quite right there um, anyway um, yeah so I'm just I've just jumped in here I've just uh, kind of reset around about the same time I reset the other car and my average is kind of far. well this is not a true average because I am uh, well, I'm up to about five miles per second. Yeah, maybe it'll be about the same actually. Before I uh, slag off my old, my dear old car, uh, that it's not nearly as efficient as the one I was just in, um, because I need to do more than two miles to get the average proper, properly sorted uh, on that. Um, but yeah, 
they did seem to be better built than the newer car, has to be said, um, than, than this one. Though, nothing's fallen off this one or anything like that. It's just a bit clangy, you know? Um, which will be a weight thing, of course, you know, trying to keep the weight down and all that. Um, now, I did think, um, I'm gonna go, I'm on the, going heading up to the dual carriageway here. Um, I did think the motor was quieter though, uh, of the new one. So whether that is a bit more sound insulation, um, but I kind of floored it and it's the sort of sound you, you wouldn't pick up. Uh, on a on you know on the recording because it's too subtle. It's you need to be in the car to kind of pick up these differences, right? No one there. Yeah, there's definitely more wine uh, on this motor than there was on the the new one. So there was a bit of wine just as it was getting up to 60 miles an hour on the other one, but pretty much all the way up before that, hardly any not noticeable wine. Uh, from the motor on this one as soon as you put your foot down there's just I mean it's you know it's not annoying or anything like that it's just a different different motor um, will be part of it maybe they've improved the sound uh, insulation as well I, I suspect it's the R90 motor rather than the the Continental motor that's in this one uh, the Q210 whatever it is on this one I'm trying to remember now um so there we are anyway something to think about yeah i was uh they're offering so you, on top of the uh, now if you this is if you do a pcp thing on top of the the four and a half thousand or whatever it is uh grant it's um ne like nearly six thousand pounds off as a dealer contribution it's quite a lot isn't it um which brings it down to, uh, well, less than I paid for this model when I bought it, um, by a good uh, £2,000 or something like that. Um, plus, you're getting the bigger battery. Um, yeah. Something to think about. All right. Uh, heading back to Aberdeen. And I don't need to save the horses because the car is nicely charged. It's been such a long time since I've done a, a video and uh, I may put another one, I may put another video up because i would recorded stuff from a journey, oh, months and months ago. I've just been, oh, crazy busy and just not had the uh, the chance. Whenever I've had a free moment, I'm so, so exhausted. Uh, and uh, partly just, oh, just taken up with what's going on in the world at the moment and, uh, uh, in the worry and all of that so it's been taking up kind of spare time is just trying to keep on top of um, everything that's going on in the world uh, particularly uh, stateside but and then the impact that has everywhere else uh, especially on the environment um, as we have seen uh, post uh, well not post because it's still kind of going Hurricane Harvey and uh, all of the huge impact that is going to have on the uh, uh, Louisiana and uh, Texas and the cleanup operation and rebuilding and and we see there we see the impact um, of climate change um, not which is of course let's you know that's nuance um, uh, uh, hurricanes would happen anyway but climate change means that hurricanes um, tropical storms will get more powerful they'll pick up more water because the water is warmer so there isn't the usual damping effect in the of the the sea the ocean uh, on the hurricane so that actually strengthen the hurricane uh, it'll dump more water so kind of what you saw in Houston was exactly what you'd expect to see uh, as a result of, of climate change in what might have been uh, a, a lesser category storm becomes a bigger one and of course we've seen a number of huge storms over the last few years uh, all of these you know once in a hundred years once in 500 years style storms and um, but those storms become more likely uh, that kind of level category of storm with climate change with heating of uh, oceanic waters so 
not a big surprise there. And then the disaster of no regulation in Houston on buildings and all that kind of thing. They've been so lax there that they've destroyed natural floodplains and all the rest. They've built on them all, which is just insanity. And uh, so it's, yeah, as they say, a perfect storm. Oh, uh, sorry for the pun, uh, but has caused, yeah, well, mayhem. Anyway, so I could do a whole nother one on that. I might do it some, <laughs> at some other point. Um, but on uh, kind of EVs and on Renault Zoe in particular, because um, I have, I can't even remember, and I haven't edited that other video because I'm sure I talked about some of this in that. So if I do end up editing that other video from a few months ago and putting it up, apologies if there's um, some crossover here. Uh, the, it's really encouraging to see uh, the Renault Zoe sales have just gone through the roof in the last year. Um, so I. I and it's, I, it's a, a post I put up, oh well, years ago now, was talking a bit about the, the differences between uh, what you're seeing in posts by, um, or what you're seeing with, you know, which cars are selling. At that point, the Zoe was maybe not selling as much as a Renault would have anticipated and hoped. And at that time, it didn't surprise me that because um, a lot of folks that would have been early uh, to, you know, early adopters uh, would tend to be folks that have a little bit more money and so they would go for a car that was more expensive whereas the Renault was, a, you know, it's a, it's a budget car um, in comparison to your Teslas, even to a Nissan Leaf, it was quite a lot more expensive um, than the, the Zoe was. And having that option of the battery lease, which again further brings down your upfront cost. Um, that, so, but now it's really, especially with the the new battery, uh, the sales are well. It's in Europe, of course. It's only sold in Europe, the Zoe. Um, so it'd be fascinating to know if the Zoe was rolled out across the world. Though I think there are there'd be impacts there just on charging networks and all of that. Um, because of a, the prevalence of AC charging in Europe, uh, partly because of the push by Renault uh, in order to make sure that's there. Uh, but it is, oh, by far outselling anything else at the moment, the Zoe with the, um, this option. And I uh, saw a really good video by Ian Sampson um, in thinking about well and he's ordered a, a new Zoe to replace his his leaf and uh, it, there was a really uh, 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 it was a, a lovely point which uh, he made in that video um, which is just saying you know all this talk about the Tesla Model 3 and, and I think he had a, a deposit on the Tesla Model 3 and I I'd been tempted to do the same but I know my wife would have killed me so um, I, <laughs> I didn't do it um, but uh, it, that realization of, of taking a Zoe for a, a drive and realizing that, I, and I've, I've seen it again uh, on the press uh, the last couple of uh, last week or so about the Tesla Model 3 is the first affordable uh, car with a decent range. And you're like, well, I'm just sitting in this, you know, the demonstrator there with it saying 190 miles. Now that's. That's enough easily to get you from uh, Aberdeen to Glasgow in one hop. Um, that the Tesla Model 3 is the first car that's going to do it. And thinking, no, it is here. I mean, and it is very, very affordable. Uh, so it would still be hard. I would still find it hard to. And I have, you know, I have looked at some other, like the new e Golf with the 30, kind of, is it 35, 36 kilowatt hour battery in it. Looks like a really, really nice car. And uh, which would mean it would be out of our price range. Oh, I'd have to get, uh, wait for one to be second hand. Um, looks like a really, really nice car. But even so, it's still a smaller battery than the new Zoe has. So you're gonna get by far less range. Uh, than you would in the in the Zoe, and while all the you know I, I, you know I, I like a car with a lot of you know that's a nice car to be in. <sighs> if it's your car that you're pootering around the town in, doing the occasional long run, 
here I am, I'm sitting at 70 miles an hour on the motorway, cruise control set at 70, it's no bother at all. I mean, everything else is a bit superfluous, isn't it? Uh, nice though it is to have and all of that. It's, uh, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, it's not necessary. Um, which then does make you ponder the how much you're paying for things that are unnecessary. Um, yeah, so just having a wee drive in that other one, and you realise, do you know what? It is, it is a darn good car, this, for the money and for what it what it offers you, uh, and it still perfectly meets uh, meets our needs. It just ah, the, the extra capacity of the battery would be nice. Would be nice. Whether it's worth, uh, so you know, yeah. Anyway, lots to think about. As you can tell, I'm thinking as I'm talking, which is never a good idea to be trying to cogitate and come up with all different plans as you're driving. Uh, yeah. Well, there we go. Um, yeah, good, good for Renault. Uh, really pushing this on. The other car that I would be uh, would be really good to see is the new uh, Chevy Bolt, uh, the Opel Ampera E, I think they're calling it in the continent. But there are no, no plans for that coming to the UK at the moment that I'm aware of. Um, and I suspect that probably with Opel having been sold now, I would have thought that all the kind of all the plans for um, you know bringing that car over and all of that I would have thought that's all up in the air anyway though Opel are, are doing it but um, yeah um, we'll see see what happens there but that would be another car that I'd be really intrigued with because it is uh, it's kind of sensible but has all the kind of mod cons you need even bigger battery 60 kilowatt hours so easy easy 200 mile range uh, would be a lot more fun uh, as far as pep goes uh, than this car is it's uh, it's really got a nice peppy motor in it and um, yeah no chance of driving the the bolt the bolt ampere e whatever it be called uh, over here uh, it's a shame yeah and um, what else? I guess we're just kind of waiting for all these sort of, you know, next generation models to come out. Of course, the new Leaf uh, is due out uh, imminently, and I'm going to be interested to see that. Um, yeah, that that looks like, so I assume it'll have a similar battery capacity to the uh, Zoe, kind of 40 kilowatt hours-ish, something along those lines. And that'll be a bit bigger, a bit nicer. It looks certainly looks a bit smarter. Uh, to my eyes, I know it's all subjective, uh, than the current Leaf, but it doesn't stand out as much as the, the current Leaf does, from what I've seen of the, the images. Just, it's got the same kind of um, uh, standard kind of Nissan uh, corporate look at the moment uh, to it, which is quite sharp edged and quite uh, stylish, I guess. Uh, it looked a little bit like the new Honda Civic, I think um, if you ask me but uh, there we are um, yeah that'd be interesting interesting to take that for a, a wee drive when it when it comes out looks good should be a big improvement on the uh, the old one I would assume in, in lots of ways um, and my goodness me Nissan have had a lot of experience with the with the Leaf so they really should be able to make that a, a, a an excellent car uh, for family family use that'd be really good to see that would be so that would be a t you know that would be a temptation oh, flipping Nora this uh, must be a diesel Corsa uh, just pulled out to the dual carriageway in front of me with absolutely oh smoke billowing out everywhere uh, yeah. nasty 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 um, yeah so we'll see now uh, as far as you know it's, it's a usual story uh, no videos from me it's just because well, nothing's really happened so um, the Renault has been absolutely since uh, it had its charging circuit uh, replaced at the beginning of the year 
nothing. Just been day in, day out, uh, using it, pootering around the city, a few occasional long runs down to Perth, uh, all that sort of stuff, and it's been absolutely fine. Uh, no problems, nothing has gone wrong or anything like that um, that I'm aware of. I haven't had any error messages come up. Just occasional uh, red warning on the dash with one our local charger, but it's not, it's the something wrong with the charger, it's not the car, because umpteen other people I've seen Leafs, uh, a Tesla Model S had a problem connecting to it, so there's something clearly not right with one side. The other one side is fine, uh, and on my car as well, it uh, it didn't tell what the error was, but uh, and it didn't come up with the um, battery charging uh, impossible or uh, error or anything, it, but it did flash red on the dash and wouldn't connect. Um, so yeah, there's some weird glitch with that side of the charger at the moment that lots of cars are, are struggling with. Otherwise, that's, I think that's the only thing in the last nine months um, that has uh, given me any cause for concern, I think. No, I'm saying that. Maybe there was something in the past which I've forgotten about, uh, but I don't think so. Uh, which is all good. And uh, now I am getting, I'll be pushing in a few months time, I'm at the end of my uh, four year uh, warranty and a service pack and all that stuff. Um, so I'm, I'll investigate. Now I th I'm pretty sure all the running gear is still guaranteed for another, at least another year anyway. The back, I mean the battery of course, because it's leased is a whole nother issue, it's, it's covered. Uh, anyway, but I think the actual, all the transmission, motor, all that's part of it is at least five years uh, guaranteed for. So it would just be for all the other bits and bobs, the suspension, the, you know, uh, windows, steering, all that kind of thing. Um, which, as I said, because I've got a little bit of a rattle going on, does make me think, oh, maybe, maybe I might extend that for a year uh, just to, to cover it. So. Uh, I'll need to investigate that. Otherwise, not much to report really. Just a uh, life with the Renault Zoe, pretty seamless. Um, no great issues, which is great. That's how you want it, right? And uh, um, but because of lack of time, I've not either had some you know really adventurous journeys in it. Uh, I still I'd love to do the the round Scotland kind of 500 uh, mile you know journey around Scotland at some point uh, that'd be nice to take a take a week to to do that but uh, finding the time there's the problem all right I think that's enough uh, for this uh, this uh, episode uh, for now and uh, I'll catch you at some point in the future cheerio bye